Hello everyone, hope you're well. I am at Fee this morning. I have a break, which should technically be my lunch because it's 12.18 on Saturday, but I am taking a moment because we might actually be going to Ikea later and I'm thinking lunch now or Swedish meatballs later. Swedish meatballs later for sure. I'm filming my much awaited love Q and A and I have your questions that I have from Instagram that you guys asked me that I will be answering and also just generally going to be giving you guys some thoughts and feelings on the L-O-V-E word. But I wanted to tell you guys that this video is kindly sponsored by Squarespace. They are an online platform which help create websites and blogs and stores and they're actually the platform that I use to create the Fee Clinic website. So we'll talk more about that later but let's get on to the video. I started this channel when I was 17 and boy oh boy has a lot of things changed like i'm such a different person obviously i mean it would be a bit scary if i wasn't i literally went to an all-girls school um for secondary school and then moved into college you know at 16 is it do you go to college when you're 16 yeah at 16 i went to a mixed college i don't think i properly started dating until i was at uni um again imagine like 18 year old barbara i was always not scared of boys but you know boys were like a foreign thing to me and moral of the story is essentially your younger years and dating are gonna basically build you up to what you want when you're you know 28 29 in your 30s etc and this is kind of what this is about and it's really funny because i listened to a podcast um, I always listen to Sherlock's and I'm actually just starting um, to get into their podcast series. They had this, um, I don't even know what she looks like, like I've been so busy I haven't even had a chance to, to look at her Instagram and she's a TikTok star and I think she's called Tinks. Anyone down below please tell me do you follow her, do you know her? Again, I literally just know her from this podcast, I don't know anything. She was talking about a theory that she has about when you're dating and it can be boys and girls it can be you know and i think i do this as well i have to say what we do is we put people in boxes and she basically calls it i think she called it the box theory and as soon as she said this i was like why have i not heard of this before she was just saying that you know men will when you're going on a date or when you meet a man for the first time whether that be at like a dinner party or in university or you know wherever you meet them online um more often than not you will be put in a box like i do this to men and i'm so sure men have done this to me so i like her obviously i don't like her that's obvious but then it will go deeper than that and there'll be like a box for I want to date her and you know take this seriously or I just want to sleep with her dating for other girls and I just want my ego to be boosted like you will more than likely go on this date and within the first five minutes the guy will have put you in a box if you go on a date with a guy and you drink loads again this is her example and you drink loads and at the end of the day you throw up on his favorite shoes like his you know most prized shoes his mum got them for him for Christmas like you throw up all over them if he's put you in the not so favorable box and you could argue that you know he just wants to sleep with me isn't as favorable as he wants to marry and have four kids with me he his reaction will be completely different so for example if you threw up all over him and he really liked you he will probably hold your hair back take you to a corner and have you throw up more and still want to go out with you the next day and probably still want to kiss you that evening like he's not that into you then he will probably just be like you threw up all over my shoes like what the hell are you doing and he probably won't text you the, the next day i can recall being young and going out with this guy and um like this is not a video to shame or shade and like my exes and things like that i don't have a bad or negative word to say about anybody like this is just a girl talking and sharing her experiences not that i think my exes are sitting and watching this but I'm just putting a disclaimer out there. I remember being quite young and going out with this boy who I will just say at the time, I was infatuated with, like I was, the sun was shining out of his behind, let's put it this way. And I was, you know, always wanting to be on my best behavior. Like I really liked him um, and, you know, always not wanted to come off perfect, but imagine like 19 year old Barbara, that, that kind of level. And 
I remember and please if anyone has a farting story I need to I need to hear it below like come on it's just funny everyone farts like you know obviously I fart roses I went down to bend uh, and pick something up and I farted his reaction was like I had killed his cat like it was and first of all again we're gonna put farts in boxes but there's like smelly farts and then there's just like air farts and it was just an air fart it was like cute and endearing in my opinion looking back now the boy didn't even crack a smile he did not make a joke of it he did not like you know nothing it was like i had murdered someone and looking back after that and like looking at my other relationships and like my relationship now if i farted in front of my boyfriend which touch wood guys two years strong i think he would literally either ignore it or just crack up laughing that person just wasn't that into me or he just had put me in a box and in that box the girl that he would put in that box wasn't meant to fart you know we're coming on to a new year and i think it's really easy for me to you know, I'll post pictures of my relationship on my Instagram. I see my Instagram, which some of you might think is a bit strange, but it's also my thing. Although I have a public Instagram, I like to post pictures. I don't have a Facebook. I really like photos and my, you know, my feed is my feed. I will say now I'm in my most solid relationship I've ever been in and I haven't been in that many, but it's not always roses and rainbows and we love each other so much, but don't do not sit there as a single woman because I've done it before or a single man and compare yourself to someone else. I cannot stress highly enough how much being happy for someone else, and I mean truly from your heart, like deep, deep down happy for someone else, can make you shine and feel good. And like so cheesy, like the most cheesy thing I could say, but as soon as you start seeing other people's lives in a different way and reacting to them in a different way, you will see such a change in you. And I think jealousy and envy are rife in our generation. And you know, that's a topic in itself. But all I just wanna say is this video does not come from that place. This comes from a place of a girl who is a hopeless romantic, loves that kind of thing and I genuinely think that I, I changed a few things in my life to to bring about the, the relationship that I always wanted. Um, Liz, if you're watching, I'm gonna answer your question first. Um, so Liz is a good friend of mine on, um, follow her on Instagram and stuff, guys. She's got an amazing like CrossFit business and stuff. And um, yeah, definitely follow her if you live in her area. But Liz literally just asks me, how did you find it? And by it, I think she means love. Um, I met my boyfriend online, which, let me tell you nowadays, and I meet a lot of girls, like girls will come in here to see me at fee day in, day out. And I would say the majority of people nowadays are finding relationships online. And especially in a time where we've literally been stuck indoors for two years, where else are you gonna meet this guy? Like, I had a lot of questions like this. Talk about online dating or, you know, I'm really sad and um, I'm just waiting for Mr. Right. I will just be really honest with you guys waiting for someone to knock at your door or that you're gonna bump into him at the library which you never go to the library or that you're just gonna sit next to him on the train or that kind of thing is great and romanticizing about it is great but you need to kind of see finding love as almost like a a task like a day task and there was a point in my life when i was not ready to put finding love on my task list. Like it wasn't a priority. I was going through some stuff. I was confused emotionally. Like there were so many things going on, but as soon as you feel ready to put yourself first and finding a relationship and just generally being really serious or just saying, look, I just really want to go on loads of dates. Like I did that. I literally at one point my mum was like why are you not going online dating? Like you're just sitting at home on a Saturday. What are you doing? You're like 25 years old, 26 years old like wake up, he's not gonna come and knock on the door. And I think it's as soon as you kind of realize that you need to take matters a little bit into your own hands, that that's when I think things start rolling. And my relationship, I did not meet him the first time I went on an online date. Don't think that you're gonna download Tinder and in five days you're gonna meet the one. Like 
it's just not gonna happen. I met my boyfriend on Hinge and I was on Bumble first. I tried Tinder, oh my God. I know there's lots of Tinder people on there, but Tinder is a kind of a minefield. Bumble is not for me. I don't like making first conversations, so it just wasn't for me. And then I found Hinge and I was like, it kind of feels like Instagram. It just feels like people look a bit more real. Um, and you know, went on, I think two dates before I met my boyfriend and that is quick. I will just say that, that is fast. And I'm not ashamed to say this, the dates, literally I was going on at one point like a date a week. If you are a girl and you want to go and sleep around and you want to do that, power to you. There is, you are no different than any man. I don't care what anyone tells you. And at the end of the day, if you are okay with a guy putting you in a box, which is the just I want to sleep with you box and you are more than happy to be in that box. Girl, decorate the box, party in the box, scream in the box, go for it. But I think this video is also about what to do if you're put in that box. Like, do you continue? Do you think you can ever come out of that box? That's kind of where I'm going with this basically. This is a good one. How do you let go of someone knowing that they're not right for you but they feel like the love of your life? Girl, I've been there. I've been there for many a time. A lot of crying, a lot of listening to Adele, a lot of like, you know, my mum, my poor mum, like we're not in my flat right now, has sat with me on my green sofa crying many a time. When you're younger, there are just so many more compromises that you will make and I'll talk about compromises as well. At 26, which is when I met my boyfriend, there was just many less compromises that I was willing to make in my relationship. So 21 year old Barbara would be open to dating a guy who doesn't wanna have children one day because I'm not really thinking about having children at 21. Power to you if you are. And I think it's realizing that sometimes he's just not that into you. And it's a horrible thing to say and it took me and it takes a lot of strength for you to realize that, but sometimes, why do you want to be with someone who puts you number 73 in his life? Like, if you come after the gym, a shower, walking the dog, like, work, going to the gym three times a day, like, there comes a point where you have to kind of look at things from, like, outside and just say, I, I kind of want more. And it's it's at the end of the day you need to put yourself first um i do think that making yourself as distant from the person as possible helps so i always used to unfollow people as childish as this could be like if you're going to be watching his instagram stories or his snapchat or whatever is popular nowadays every day you're not going to get over him it's fact or if he calls you every week and wants to get you back just because he's bored you're, you're not gonna ever get over here. This little interlude to talk about Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform where you can build your own website, blog, store, anything your heart desires. And you guys all know, that's where I designed Fee's website. Now, I'm so happy with the website, you guys. I cannot bang on about how great their 24 seven support team are. I love the fact that I've been able to integrate my logo and my own scheduling system in. It's just been, such an easy, easy ride. I'm also thinking of adding like testimonials, like a testimonials page. Um, I need to get emailing some of my um, clients and patients to get that. What would you guys think? Do you like reading about reviews, like written reviews? Everything's already set up, all my colors and fonts and everything. I just have to click a button and I can make the page. So um, I honestly urge you guys to try out their two week free trial and use my code for 10% off your very first domain name or website. And let's get on to the rest of the video. How do you find the one at 29? Girl, you're 29, you're a baby, you're so young. I know I always hear like, I'm so old, I'm so old. Like 29 now is like the new 19. I honestly, can I be honest, I would not go back to being 19 if you paid me. Look at this as a positive at 29 you know what you want compared to when you were 19 or 21 or 23 or 25. You're gonna realistically change that person. And a lot of you guys are gonna resonate with this. I used to love Laguna Hill, um, Laguna Beach and the hills. And Lauren says it, she's like, as a girl, you always wanna be that girl that will change that guy. And I have wanted to be that girl so many times, but 
you can't you just unless the guy wants to change for himself you're not going to change the guy you're in the box that he's put you in and you're, he's not gonna change. Have fun, date, enjoy it. You're 29 years old, you're not gonna get that back ever. And realizing that you know what you want, you're in a stronger position. You're actually in a stronger position than ever. Says, how do you just enjoy dating? I just wanna skip to the established happy relationship. Honestly, enjoy dating. Like my boyfriend and I will honestly, sometimes we'll just reminisce and be like, can you remember when we did this? Can you remember when we did that? And like as amazing as being in a solid relationship is, there are so many different facets to it. Like the first six months are like exciting and you're like getting to know them. And it's like, when am I gonna do this? Like, when is it okay to do that? Like, you know, um, you're getting to know each other, like physically, emotionally, like there's so many exciting things about that first six months and enjoy it like relish in it go on dates like cook for each other um yeah like meeting the parents meeting the family meeting the sisters in my situation like there's so many crazy things in first that you're never going to get back and we literally i'm such a my boyfriend's not so much a liver in the past kind of person i can literally sit and reminisce about when we were first dating all the time but enjoy it and trust me when you get to the like we're two years in guys like that's a long time that's the longest relationship i've ever been in and i actually think it's longer than two years i think it's like two and a half years we're living with each other we've been living with each other for ages now and you just reach a different dynamic so every single dynamic you go into from like the before saying i love you stage to the after to now you kind of realize like i think he's it like enjoy all those different facets and um yeah trust me you're never going to get those memories back so enjoy it how do you learn to trust a person i always self-sabotage i hear you i am such a self-sabotager and i think funnily enough i started to do this with my boyfriend when we moved in with each other i remember we had our first ever like big fight like big fight about nothing like i can't even tell you i can't even remember what it was about and I remember like after it going, are we gonna break up now? Like, and he was like, Barbara, are you actually serious? Like, can you hear yourself? No. And I think sometimes you just need to, <sighs> trust is such a big thing. And I've always been a really trusting person and that trust has been pooped on loads of times. And unfortunately with trust, you just kind of have to trust people at face value. But if you go into a relationship taking in the hurt from all the others, you're never gonna make that relationship strong. And when you start to notice that someone supports you so wholeheartedly in everything that you do and tells you when you're right and wrong because they love you, that's when I think you know that the trust is there. I think it's when you realize that that person is so wanting the best for you that you know that they, you know, you can trust them. Said, were you multi-dating prior to meeting your partners? How quickly did you become exclusive? Anyone, who's on hinge and tells you that they're only talking to you or tinder or bumble is talking out of i'm talking about bums a lot in this video is literally just telling you porkies because nowadays i will tell you most often than not and it's not just boys people are talking to several people and can i be honest you can't expect someone to just shut off all those communications that they've had just because they've met you the first time and they like you. I think if you have that expectation of someone, you are a little bit head in the clouds. And I think when I was younger, I definitely had that. I think in my head, it was always like, well, this person's met me now. Like, you know, when are we gonna be exclusive? When are we gonna be? And I think you just need to take it at your own pace. My boyfriend and I did become exclusive quite quickly. But I think it's just because it just felt right. There was no games. It just, we wanted to see each other all the time. Um, like, I think we went on our first date on a Thursday. I saw him the next Sunday. Like, that's, that's how you know you're in a different box. I just, I cannot stress this enough. Like, when I heard that theory, I was like, this is, this is my, like, this is game changing. I wish I knew this when I was single. And it's about realizing when you're in a different box. A guy who makes kind of like 30% effort and sees you every couple of weeks and when you see him, you're just probably sleeping with each other and then you go home and he doesn't text you for five days. What box are you in? Like, 
If a guy literally doesn't stop, I don't think that in the two years I've been with my boyfriend, we haven't text one day. And it's that kind of, how are you? Like genuinely, how was your day? Like, did you get home okay? Like there's such small things that trigger like a knowing, a knowing of what you are to that person and what you feel for that person as well. Like you could easily put someone in a box that they don't want to be in too. It's a two way street. Um, I don't think it really matters how long it took for us to be exclusive per se, but it's definitely something that will come organically if you're both feeling the same way. If you're not, then you might as well forget, like forget about it. And having that conversation, like I think I remember he was, when we were dating, we planned our first holiday together and we went as a group. And he was literally like, well, you're my girlfriend. Like, of course you're coming on holiday. Like, it's, it's that kind of thing where we didn't even have to speak about being exclusive. It was just like, it was just implied. So talk about your journey and finding your person. I've kind of obviously touched upon it. You guys have seen my relationships on here if you've been following me for a while. And there haven't been many. Um, but I loved being in love. Like, I've always been that person who just romanticizes everything and just, you know... I'm just such a romantic and you know I was just very young and like I said I think communication was a big big factor in my relationships I think I really struggled to communicate when I wasn't happy and that's not fair on the other person like a, another person male or female is not gonna just magically know and I think that was one of my biggest problems like when I was stressed and I was revising, like, did I not communicate that to my partner at the time properly? Like, there are so many things that you could argue, um, or I saw something dodgy on my partner's phone. Why did I not open my mouth and tell him, like, what are you doing? And I think now, at 28, I just, my boyfriend and I are really good at communicating, and I think we just generally, know that it's such an important thing like he knows i hate going to bed angry like for me and this is something that matters to me like it might not matter to him like he's such a big believer of like let things simmer and like you know think about it whereas i'm like no if we go to bed angry it means we're angry like it's it makes me more angry and i think once i started communicating that to him like you not talking to me after we've had an argument and us not talking, it makes me more angry. Like we don't do that anymore. And it's like, isn't that so simple? Like literally all I had to do is tell him, babe, if we have an argument, it needs to be more often than not, it needs to be sorted out. Like, is he meant to just know that about me? And I think my boyfriend and I, I'm a Pisces and he's a Virgo. Um, let me know down below, is that a good match? Like, <laughs> I've, I've read that it is, but I'd love to know what you guys think. Any one of you with your partners, Pisces and Virgos. And let me just tell you, we think so differently. Like, how it works is a complete minefield to me because he's so pragmatic. I'm so emotionally charged. Like, I was last night, on the sofa crying over like the day that I've had. He's very relaxed and he's just very thoughtful and he knows when he needs to switch things off in his mind. Whereas I'm just on overdrive. I like sometimes barely sleep just being up thinking about things. Like he's just not like that. And the way it works is we just kind of balance each other out and we communicate. And he knows that if I need to have a cry, like I just need to sit and have a cry and he just needs to hug me and I'll be fine. And I think like before, for example, when we used to, you know, when he used to see me like that, he used to kind of try and TED talk me and kind of, um, you know, sit and try and give me loads of answers to things and, and scenarios and things. And I just said to him, babe, I sometimes when I'm like this, I just need a hug and a kiss and I'm absolutely fine. It makes me a bit emotional, like, because we've come a long way as well. I think, you know, my boyfriend hasn't been in loads of serious relationships or anything. And I wouldn't say that I've been in many either. And... It, it did take a lot for us to learn how to communicate with each other, but it's just become so much better. And like, I know when he's feeling a certain way and I think he definitely knows when I'm feeling a certain way. And I think we know how to tread with each other a bit better, but that comes with time and communication. And I think that's definitely something that I lacked in my earlier twenties. I used to let things just fester. And it meant that although I love the person, I used to have this expectation of, 
well they should know that I feel like this or they should know that I want this and it's like well the poor boy is not a mind reader Barbara so I think sometimes it's also about taking the onus on your own and knowing that I could have done something better as well I'm wondering do you have any non-negotiables yes and she said what are they if you do I think it's just for me my biggest non-negotiable is I just don't want to be messed around and I don't have time for it like I said I was never gonna go on dates with someone who would text me after two weeks like uh, snooze boring like can't be bothered with it and I think um, the good thing is that I've been very lucky that the people I have dated haven't really bar maybe a couple haven't really done that um like as soon as i i saw that that was my biggest red flag i was like bye see you later someone said how to deal with negative thoughts about yourself when dating og pharmacist follower thank you um i went out with someone who and i said this to my mum yesterday we went to Vista village together and i told her and she was like wow i used to go out with a boy he used to tell me um you your body's an eight out of ten but if you went to the gym you'd be a ten out of ten if someone dared say something to me along those lines now i don't even know what i would say but obviously young barbara like you would just i don't even know what my reaction would have been then and i think it's really easy to you know and you guys know i've talked about this i've put on weight during the years and it's really easy to beat yourself up about certain things and compare yourself like i said to this instagram or this person or this person magazine or whatever and when you love someone you will love every single part of them from the first little pore on their nose to their tippy toes and as cheesy as that sounds when you're in a relationship where your partner makes you feel like you are the coolest funniest sexiest smartest person in the world i'm gonna get emotional um because it's such a good feeling you will radiate that and i i've had so many comments from you guys being like you just are glowing different and you know you're just you know i've changed so much and i'm not like the size 8 barbara that I was when I was 19 or 20 and it's about being with someone who just yeah just celebrates you like for me I've never been with anyone who celebrates me so much and I to be honest I celebrate him and it's about having no boundaries and doing that and not feeling like you can't tell your boyfriend that he looks nice that day or he's done this well and that you've done this well and um trust me like I said when you are with that person they will they will celebrate you and um you'll celebrate them back and that's just the best feeling but you do and i do believe in this wholeheartedly if you are not feeling good in yourself dating is going to be tricky you're going to feel not imposter syndrome but a little bit and i think fake it till you make it's great but if you're at rock bottom work on yourself a little bit tell yourself that you're this and that and hear it from the people around you your mums your sisters your friends and that will put you in good stead when you're dating um but if you're at zero when you are dating it does make things a bit difficult how do you know it's the right guy what you've learned since moving in together i think i went through the whole don't think someone's a mind reader thing also that you aren't gonna have to compromise like he hates it and we have this running joke now where we have a thing a month that we're gonna try and ch not change but like a thing a month that we both don't like that the the other one does that we're going to try and change um or not do and mine is i love to leave my coffee cup by the sink like i don't rinse it and it drives him mad but that would never drive me mad if he did it and vice versa what was his okay whenever he takes the bins out he never checks the fridge first to see if anything needs to go in the bin and that just things like this that you realize that would never uh cue or that you that won't drive each other crazy like my boyfriend is a stomper like in the mornings he stomps 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 like i literally like mousy mouse come out of the bedroom like when i get up early and he's just there like and we've had a conversation about this ever since he's moved in and it's still something that i'm compromising on so i think it's just sometimes about realizing that 
it's it's just these quirks of loving your partner and being with them and they're not doing it to be mean it's just years and years of habits of me loving to leave my coffee cup or drink cup next to the sink and not rinsing it these are probably some of my favorite videos to film and to watch like podcasty vibe like you're just listening to me you don't even have to watch me um so let me know if you'd like me to do them on more topics maybe friendships like that kind of thing. Also make sure to check out Squarespace for 10% off your very first domain name or website using my code. I will see you all very soon. Take care and I'm sure I'm going to see you guys before Christmas but have a lovely Christmas and New Year's and happy holidays. See you all soon. Bye!